Although Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin isn't as buggy as the original FNAF Security Breach release was, resulting in speedruns lasting like three minutes, there are still several glitches in Ruin that have resulted in a pretty sweet speedrun, albeit a bit longer. Or I guess I should say were in this game, since as of the making of this video, many of the glitches seen here have been unfortunately patched out. In any case, speedrunning this game isn't for the faint of heart or those with low patience levels like myself, as every small little mistake can lose a whole bunch of time, or worse yet, result in a soft lock. Despite that though, some of the tricks here are not only satisfying to pull off, but equally interesting visually. So let's head on back into the Mega Pizzaplex and see how speedrunners have already been able to beat FNAF Ruin in less than 28 minutes. Alright, so we start things off here as Cassie hops into the now abandoned Pizzaplex in search of Gregory, who we played as in Security Breach. And time for the speedrun starts as soon as we take control of Cassie here. We then head down this ladder and we hear a walkie-talkie in the distance that we need to investigate. But first we need to run and hop over to this flashlight that we have to grab before we can proceed. Now, of course, it won't do us any good here since I've disabled all the lighting in the game, and if you're wondering why that is, basically it just makes things easier to see and it can allow things to load a bit faster. So it may not look as visually appealing as the game normally does, but it certainly is useful for speedrunning. Anyways, after passing not one, not two, but three incredibly scary jump scares, we make our way to the second floor of the lobby and check out the walkie-talkie from which Gregory is trying to contact us. And after a quick chat, we learn that we have to get over to Roxy Raceway, so it's up the ladder we go. <clears throat> up the ladder we go. Now I didn't mention this earlier since the first ladder was so short, but there's actually a small trick you can do to climb the ladders in this game a bit faster. So this game actually lets you set two inputs for all of the controls, and by setting two different keys for up and down, if you press both of those at the same time while climbing up or down a ladder, you will actually move at a faster pace. Also, for whatever reason while climbing this ladder here, whenever I'd reach the top of it the first time, I would get knocked back all the way down and would have to climb back up again. No idea why this was happening, but it was certainly annoying. Anyways, after climbing up to the top here for the second time, we get to perform the first major glitch of the run. By jumping into this tool chest and then spam jumping while moving forward, if you're at the right angle, Cassie will actually be able to essentially get a second jump and can vault on top of the tool chest. And then from here, you can jump on top of the hitbox of the railing here, jump onto the hitbox of the gate in the middle, and then you can jump towards this wall, which if you do it right, you will discover that there's actually no collision for the wall up here. Gotta be pretty careful here though, as the smallest of mistakes can lead you to over jumping and dying, or yeah, getting soft locked in an area you can't normally get to. And like I mentioned at the start of this video, this can happen quite often in this run. Anyways, back up here, you can jump across and actually make it to the top of the vent section, and then you can follow it and then drop down into the area below, and this lets you skip the entire vent crawl as well as the whole section in the back room kitchen with the Chica jump scare. And come to think of it, you actually don't even see Chica at all in this speedrun. After a bit of running, we get to the end here where we have to grab the Faz Wrench, which we'll still use a decent amount in the speedrun, like right here for the next door. If you haven't played this game, basically these puzzles just have you filling up these conduits to a certain level, and the goal is to get all the conduits in the blue zones at the same time. It's pretty straightforward. Once through the door, there's a small trick that you can do by first jumping on these boxes, then onto the railing here. Then if you carefully move to drop down onto the ledge, you can actually then drop all the way down to the bottom. Not a massive skip or anything, but it can shave off like 15 to 20 seconds of stair running. Next, we have to run through this utility corridor, witness a few more epic jump scares, and then we can make our way to this pipe, get a nice greeting from our pal Monty, and after falling for a while, we get a nice title card. Then after coming to in the stomach area of Gator Golf, we walk around before we get yet another jump scare, this time from Maskbot, who is absolutely not Mapbot and shouldn't be ever mistaken as such. Maskbot, of course, gives us a mask, and this lets us go between the real world and AR world in the game and this will be absolutely necessary for most of the glitches in the speedrun. 
If you haven't watched my short or any other videos on this, basically how Ruin works is that when you take off or put on the mask, Cassie will actually physically warp between the two nearly identical areas. And if this sounds like something that could lead to various exploits in the game, well, it is. And we actually get a taste of that right away here as after chatting with Helpy, by standing in the right spot here in the AR world, after taking off the mask you can actually end up clipping inside the object here and from there you can jump a few times to get up top and out of normal bounds. Then after making a somewhat precise jump that if you miss you'll get stuck out of bounds, we can walk along the hitbox of the wall here as we put on the mask, and then at the end there's this pipe thing where we need to take off the mask again to jump onto a hitbox that's slightly higher, and then after putting the mask back on we can jump even higher, and then from there we want to jump across towards this section and after another healthy interaction we can see that we've actually activated the autosave trigger here. Now at this point we'll need to reload the game by quitting to the main menu and then reloading the latest save. The speedruns of this game are ranked based on in-game time, so time spent pausing the game to reload saves actually isn't counted. Anyways, once loaded back in, you'll notice that we've actually made it all the way up to the second floor section of Gator Golf, and here we'll need to start deactivating some nodes. There's this barrel, as well as this large cutout of Monty. Then after breaching the security, this opens this room where we have to do it all over again, this time with this chica doll, a golf club, as well as what I think is a garbage can. At this point there's now also the random chance that MXES or the entity can start spawning in, which can lead to him directing Monty your way, so you might have to pull off the mask and wait a few seconds, which sucks in a speedrun obviously, but better safe than sorry. Then after breaching this node we can avoid another hug from Monty, and then after walking back for a bit we make our way to these radioactive barrels that are in the pizza plex for children because reasons. Now here if you go between these barrels in the real world and then put on the mask, in the AR world we can now abuse some hitboxes here to jump on top of them, and then from there you can walk along the walls and jump back down to the door that we need to get to, and jumping down this way can actually help skip a cutscene where Cassie talks to Gregory on the walkie talkie. With the next door open we can waltz through this kitchen and run and crawl through some hallways and then do another conduit puzzle. From here we get to a security office where we have to do another security breach of this node, and thankfully the moldy pizza and ball here that we need to deactivate are really close to each other so this one's pretty quick. Then guess what, we have to do this once again in the next room, so let's make our way over to this marionette doll, and then this tub thing here which needs to be deactivated to do the next security node breach. And with that node breached, we're finally done chapter 1, and now it's on to the daycare section we go. But we actually don't want to enter it like normal, as instead in this security room we want to jump towards the monitor in this spot to utilize a glitch that lets us jump on top of it. Once up, you can do a pretty precise jump onto the wall here and then put on the mask, as this causes this plane to spawn which makes it much easier to jump to, and then from here you can make your way to this plane, and then after removing the mask you can jump over and walk above the room below, and then you have to make a jump over where the wet floor bot is below as the collision there changes and you can fall back in bounds, and that's something we definitely don't want here. Anyways, after jumping across you can walk along the railing and then jump back in bounds, but as you can see not everything here is loaded in yet. So from here you'll want to run up until some more endos spawn in, and after they do you can run back to the wooden doors to trigger another autosave. And yeah, just like that we've basically skipped the entirety of the daycare section, and much like Chica, when speedrunning like this you actually don't come across Eclipse at all, not that he had a big role in the game anyway. But I digress, after exiting the game and reloading into the autosave, everything is now loaded in as normal, and now you have to walk through this blue container until the game has a bit of a lag spike. We actually want this though as this indicates that the game has loaded in another area that we'll have to glitch to right away, so after that's done we can enter the gift shop area for a pretty cool pair of glitches. First off, after putting on the AR mask, we'll want to take it off just before entering this next room. Now normally you can't take off the mask here, but by timing it right you can enter this room in a way you aren't supposed to, and as such the developers didn't exactly refine all of the collision in this room. 
So after jumping onto these shelves, you can make your way into the corner here and jump into this block. Then after putting the mask back on, you can straight up just jump into the wall to clip right out of bounds, and once out, you'll want to take the mask back off, and you can see the area below that we loaded in earlier, and yeah, that's where we need to go. So cross your fingers as we now take a big leap of faith to the theater below here. And once again, we're in a section of the map that we aren't supposed to be in, so it shouldn't be a big surprise that we can just phase through the seats here on our way back down to the area below. And once down, we don't even have to do the camera puzzle thing here to spawn in the big endo at all, as here we can quite simply just jump into the screen off of this box, and then once out of bounds, by finding the right spot and putting the mask back on, you can actually warp right to the next vent segment which gently brings us to the start of chapter 3 in the upper catwalks of Gator Golf. After a nice relaxing trip through the ride where some illusion is broken without all of the proper lighting, we get gently placed into the catwalks. Once Cassie gets back on her feet, you'll want to make your way over to this blaster in the AR world as we'll need to drop this bridge here so we can use it to make our way back later. Next, we have to rush back to the conduit panel near the start here, and from this box you can jump onto this railing, and then in the AR world, jump over this one here to make it onto this floating mini golf section, from which you can make another jump towards the Minecraft creeper block here, where the first item we need to deactivate is nearby. We then have to go through this tunnel where a warp door spawns. Now if you're careful, there are ways to bypass this portal, but if you do go through it and sit through the rather short cutscene, MXES will stop bothering you for the rest of the section, so you can kinda pick and choose what is more important in your case. In either case, after getting through the tunnel, we can glitch up to the platform here, and then rush over to deactivate the next object which happens to be this chair. And now we actually have to use this chair in the AR space, as if you stand on it in the right spot and take off the mask, you'll actually be warped across the gap onto this bridge, which I thought was pretty wacky. It is quite precise though, as if you're off by even a little bit, yeah, that can happen. Once across, we get to deactivate object number 3, and after doing so, you can jump across this gap and turn around into the corner of the machine here. If you put your mask on in the right spot, you can jump your way up on top of the hitbox of the adjacent railing, and then once up, you can walk along, sprint jump across onto this red security camera, and from this side, you can run along the railing to then try and make probably the most precise leap of faith in this entire run. And I kid you not, I've probably fallen to my demise here well over a hundred times by now. And even if you do make this jump, it's not over yet as the walkway here is slippery, so if you're not quick to react, you can also slide right off. But if you don't slide right off, you can run and make another rather tight jump here to get to the fourth and final object to deactivate in this area. After that's done, there's yet another risky jump here, but from that point, it's pretty smooth sailing to get back to the parent node, and after that's breached and the next door is opened, you can head back to the conduit puzzle, jump in the Monte Cart, and finally get out of this place. And thankfully, this is actually the last node puzzle thing we'll have to do for this run. I'm not gonna lie, I got tired of these pretty quickly when first playing this game. We now reach the maintenance section of the ride, from which after taking a set of stairs, we quickly make it to the cupcake kitchen area. Now normally here, you have to do a whole set of conduit puzzles, but we're speedrunning here, so no time for that. So we can simply just climb the ladder here and get to the end of the conveyor belt section, and then you can just glitch jump onto the frame of this small door, and not only does this skip a short cutscene with Chica, but from the top of this section, we can jump down out of bounds here, make a jump into the void across here, and then rush over to this section, effectively skipping the entire part with Chica. Like I said, we're gonna be seeing absolutely zero of her this run. Once here, with the AR mask back on, you can glitch jump up this piping, onto this wall, and then back in bounds, and then go through this cupcake and through this door here to activate another autosave trigger. And I'm sure you know the drill by now, so after exiting the game and reloading, Chapter 4 is done in only a few short minutes. The next chunk of the speedrun isn't all too crazy as there aren't really any tricks for it, so we basically just slap the mask on and run through this hallway, the first server room here, as well as the gigantic music room. At the end here is the first security camera anomaly puzzle thing we need to do for the run, but thankfully this one is really easy as the order of the symbols just requires you to switch to the next camera to the left after getting the first music note pair anomaly. 
We then have to do the same in the next room, and thankfully, this one is just as easy, only this time you move to the next right camera each time after finding the first star anomaly. Then, after tipping our hats to the rabbit here, we go to the next set of hallways for a pretty big skip. With the mask on, if you stand in the right spot just before this door along this wall, by taking it off you can actually warp into this room and just like that we actually skip almost the entirety of chapter 6. That means no introduction to Roxy, no AR inhibitors, and no node section. If you've played this game you can probably appreciate just how much time this glitch just saved. Now this glitch has been dubbed by my pal Astral Spiff as the MatPat Incident, as he encountered this by complete accident on his playthrough, and yeah, it's pretty rad that this glitch ever even existed in the first place. Very weird. Now we can make our way through a few more corridors to get to the upper area of the Flume Ride. After starting to go down the ladder to load more of the next area, you can actually go back up, glitch jump onto this tool chest, jump across onto the railing, and then hop on down to the area below, and this lets us completely skip the cutscene of Monty spawning in here, so we can do both the first conduit puzzle as well as the next one without any threat of the Chompy Boy coming after us. Then after saying a quick goodbye to said Chompy Boy who gets roasted and toasted, you can shuffle your way through the rest of the ride's catwalks and back rooms to finally make it to the first chunk of Roxy's Raceway. Then, basically the inverse of what we did with the machine back in the Gator Golf Catwalks, by putting your mask on and then taking it off in the right angle here, you can jump up to the top of the collision of the sea can here, from which you can then jump across onto this fence, run along it for a while before jumping across, running some more, jumping onto some higher collision, jumping across here to make it to the other side, and then finally after some careful walking we can drop down inbounds below here. Should go without saying at this point that yeah, if you mess up any of these jumps, you're pretty much screwed. Once here, we can put on and take off the mask to get into this corner, and then by simply jumping up this wall, you can get over it and get right back out of bounds. And then once over, if you go up to this section here near the corner, you can fiddle around with taking the mask on and off, and then you can clip into some of the collision. And if you're really lucky like I was here, sometimes you can just clip right through into the next room. If that doesn't happen right away, but you notice that you're already clipping into some of the rocks here, you can just take the mask on and off near the shutters here, and it should work as well. In any case, clipping into this room completes this section, and we also get to skip Roxy politely asking for her eyeballs back. Now there is actually another interesting way of skipping into this last room that I've seen that can be achieved by taking off the mask just before starting the jump scare cutscene with the go-kart. And if done correctly, the game will freak out a bit, and then you'll actually end up having the AR mask on while still in the real world. The game of course doesn't like this, so if you stand near this rock formation and take off the mask again, you'll end up getting warped way up high, and from here you can maneuver your way out of bounds and then back into this section to skip to the next area of the game. Now I tried this method a few times myself, and personally, I just didn't find it very consistent, so I always elected to go with the first one. Anyways, moving on, the next section has us toying around with the masking mechanics some more. So once we get to the hallway with all of the bowling storage rooms, with the mask on, if you take it off near the door along the wall to the first room here, you'll actually remain in the AR world but with the mask off, and with this, if you put the mask back on just before entering this room with the giant shoe, you'll end up getting warped back into the real world but with the mask still on. I know it can get a bit confusing, but hopefully I didn't lose ya. With another super mask jump essentially saved up now, we can head up these stairs towards Bonnie Bowl, and then by taking the mask off along this wall, we once again get beamed up and we can use this to fall onto the platform out of bounds below. It's a pretty tight fall here, as if you do it right, you'll just barely make it on, but it's not all too bad. Once down, you can look to see the large portal loop below, and if you line yourself up with it as well as the poster behind you, putting on the mask in the right spot will actually warp you right into the vent you need to enter. Now it doesn't start the cutscene right away, so you'll have to crouch and walk up the vent a bit to activate the trigger for the cutscene, but once that starts, you're in for a little trip through some happy Fazbear birthdays to get to MXES at the end, which then brings us to the Fazbear Blast section of the game. Yeah, not much of Bonnie Bowl gets seen in this speedrun either. 
Once here, after doing some more of the indie horror game crawling through vents trope, you'll actually want to pause the game and enable VSync. Now this will sync the in-game frame rate to that of your monitor, which without getting too technical, with a monitor of a refresh rate of 60Hz, some tricks become easier to pull off, this being one of them. So with that set, you can glitch jump up this corner with the railing here, and then once up top, there's another invisible lip that you can jump up to, and from here, you guessed it, it's another leap of faith that if you miss… yeah. If you don't miss though, you can make your way on top of the walls here, and then use them to walk towards this wall and hop right out of bounds. You then have to walk along the edge of the wall here, which honestly looks more scary than it is, and then after doing a backwards short jump on this wall, you can make it up to the collision of the barrier here, and once up there you can disable VSync. Then after jumping across to another barrier, you have to walk around the edge of the wall here before jumping across to the top of the vent. Now this jump doesn't seem tricky, but if you don't jump close enough to the start of the vent, you'll actually get a vent jump scare. I kid you not, this is actually what happens. Anyways, I hope you aren't tired of out of bounds moving and grooving, as now we get to run on and just along the edge of this vent, jump across some light fixtures, and then onto this door frame, which honestly is really precise, as if you're off by even a little bit, you'll fall into the out of bounds room below, essentially being a run killer. But we do need to land on this door frame, and then crouch in the right spot, as this will trigger the game to load in the next area. And after it does that, you have to jump onto this vent here, and then from there we do yet another drop of faith onto this room below, from which you can then abuse the mask warping system some more by putting the mask on to return to the real world, but now with another super jump stocked up. Finally, we make our way to the climax of the game, but first, you'll want to jump over this table here, as failing to do so will result in a slow cutscene where Cassie chats with Gregory for a while, which will greatly reduce your speed. Also, since the game still thinks we're in the AR world, there's still the chance of MXES jump scaring you, and if you keep the mask on too long, you'll get insta zucked but unfortunately, we do need to keep the mask on for the next glitch, so you kind of just have to hope for the best in this section. Now, assuming all goes well, we actually don't even have to decommission Roxy here, saving us time as well as emotions, as by taking the mask off just before the door here, we get whisked right up and then we fall back down out of normal bounds, which lets us skip over the next door, and then we can fall right back inbounds to the area under construction, and from there we can take the elevator down to the depths below the pizza plex. This now brings us to the final stretch of the run. After making your way through the tunnels and cavern, you get to the inside of the old pizzeria here, where we get to do our final set of game-breaking glitches. After of course saying a mandatory hello to Candy Cadet, you can angle yourself between this machine and beam to glitch up here, and then after walking a bit, you fall right through the floor and onto this section of piping and wires, from which you can then make another precise jump across here, and then you can finally jump down to the room below and over this wall to drop back inbounds and thus skipping the game's not-so-surprising plot twist. Then after a quick nod to the fellas here, it's off to another cave, and I guess Gregory is still giving us directions here, which in the context of the speedrun doesn't really make any sense, and obviously since we skipped the cutscene triggers, there isn't anything actually chasing us, but I digress. As after making a few rights, and then a final left to get to this cutout of Freddy here, we can put on the mask one last time, and that is time for the speedrun, as this actually brings us right to the meme Brazil ending of the game. Why is it called the Brazil ending? Who knows, that's just what it's referred to in the game's files, but it's probably some sort of developer joke or something. The regular betrayal ending isn't any more difficult, it just takes a little bit more time, and honestly, the ending isn't any more satisfying, so I prefer to do this one. Now personally, I'll admit, I didn't get a great time doing the speedrun myself, as with all the chances of something going wrong, things did go wrong. A lot. So yeah, not gonna sugarcoat it, this certainly isn't a run that's for someone with not a lot of patience for mistakes like me. 
but the speedrunners that are much better at this game than I am have been able to string along all the tricks with minimal mistakes. And as of the making of this video, the world record is held by Danger1451 with a crazy in-game time of only 27 minutes and 39 seconds. Although it wasn't perfect, and I'm sure the time can be improved some more, the run is incredibly impressive, and I can't possibly dream of ever having a run that good. Compared to base game Security Breach on release, being a much more linear game with fewer endings, unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how you look at it, the game-breaking bugs didn't lead to beating the game in less than 5 minutes. But I think some of the tricks in the speedrun are still fascinating, not only to see, but to actually try doing as well. If you're interested in downpatching and giving it a go, I definitely recommend it. And who knows, over time, I'm sure even more glitches will be found with the mask mechanic to bring down the world record time even lower. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of my other speedrun videos, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to find your way back to the channel in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I will see you in a bit.